The drama opens up with our main character, Jo Kang Ja, who returns home to her family at night after closing her cell-phoned restaurant. Here, we learn that her family is a mess. Her mother-in-law complains about the dinner not being ready, her husband avoids getting involved in the discussion, and her teenage daughter, Ah Ron, responds to her with short answers and seems distant. Later, Kang Ja watches as her daughter leaves for her night school. However, before she leaves, the mother gives her some money and tells her to take care. Afterward, outside the school, Ah Ron stands up to bullies who are bothering her friend Yi Kyung. She remains calm even when confronted with violence and tells the bullies to control their jealousy because their leader, Jung Hee, is picking on Yi Kyung for being prettier. Aran's refusal to back down and her strong words lead to more violence. This also catches the attention of other students nearby, especially a boy named Bok Dong, who approaches the girls and suggests they stop disturbing him. Afraid, the girls immediately leave the scene. Later, it starts raining and Kang Ja gets worried for her daughter. She expresses her concerns with the family, but sadly, her immature husband and her mother-in-law do not pay attention to it. Disregarding their opinions, Kang Ja leaves home and arrives outside Ah Ran's academy, excitedly waiting for her daughter. When Ah Ran comes out, Kang Ja calls her over, but the former is annoyed and confronts her for being there. She rejects her mom's offer of an umbrella and proceeds to leave with her friend, leaving Kang Ja frustrated. Kang Ja then asks why Ah Ran avoids her, locks herself in a room, and flinches when touched. But Ah Ran remains silent. Finally, Ah Ran bursts out that she doesn't like talking to her mom. It's clear that her discomfort is more about the bullies than her mom. But Kang Ja doesn't understand and wonders if she did something wrong. Ah Ran walks away and joins her friend Yi Kyung using their teacher Noah's umbrella. Upset, Kang Ja drops the umbrella she brought and Noah rushes after her to return it, calling her student because she's wearing Ah Ran's old gym clothes. Kang Ja ignores his help and goes into a nearby tent bar to order a bottle of soju. To her dismay, Noah follows her inside and cancels her order. Losing her temper for unwanted interruption, Kang Ja unleashes a string of strong swear words, leaving the teacher in shock. In the next scene, Kang Ja returns home and finds Ah Ran's bedroom door locked once again. She then uses her key to enter, determined to have a conversation with her daughter. However, Ah Ran is asleep and Kang Ja starts to tuck her in, only to discover Ah Ran's badly bruised wrists. Shocked, she uncovers more injuries on her daughter's arms and legs. Right then, Ah Ran suddenly wakes up, but it's too late to hide the injuries. Kang Ja demands to know what happened, but her daughter tells her to stay out of it. Kang Ja decides to discuss the situation with her husband, Jin Sang, and plans to go to the school the next day to find a solution. However, Jin Sang argues that they should be cautious, as taking action might backfire, and there might not be much they can do legally. He suggests investigating quietly and transferring Ah Ran to a new school. Hearing this, Kang Ja becomes furious and asks Jing Sang if he would say the same if Ah Ran were his biological daughter. In reply, Ji Sang reveals that Ah Ran is actually Kang Ja's sister's daughter and not their own. After this, the latter cannot say any words and walks out of the room, only to find that Ah Ran has listened to their conversation. In the next scene, Kang Ja meets with Ah Ran's homeroom teacher which prompts senior teacher Do Jung Woo to look into the bullying allegations. He then interviews the students about the situation, but to his dismay, the students downplay the accusations. The head bully, Jung Hee, insists that she never laid a hand on Ah Ran, while Bok Dong suggests that Do Jung Woo should ask Ah Ran herself about it. Upon hearing that students are being questioned, timid Yi Kyung worries that this will escalate and involve her mother. Ah Ran assures her that she won't get dragged into this, but urges her friend to tell her mother before the situation gets worse. However, Yi Kyung is adamant about not involving her mother at all. When it's Ah Ran's turn to get interviewed, she tries to make it clear to the teacher that her mom has misunderstood the situation and confesses that she has never been bullied. Do Jung Woo is surprised by this revelation, tells Ah Ran to take care, 
and leaves. In the following scene, Kang Jia has a follow-up meeting with the high school teacher, who suggests the only solution is to transfer Aran to another school. This infuriates Kang Jia, and she explodes at the teacher, demanding to know if he would just ignore the situation if his own daughter were physically abused. She threatens to involve the police, government, and the court, but unfortunately, Kang Jia faces obstacles at every step. There's no concrete evidence, no witnesses, not even a statement from the victim. The police refuse to help, and she can't even file a report in court. Following this, Kang Jia heads to the courthouse using a favor from a judge she knows. The judge warmly greets Kang Jia and asks her to wait in a nearby cafe. Meanwhile, as Aran walks to her night academy, she senses that she's being followed. In fear, she starts running and ends up getting caught by her stalker, Bok Dong, who threatens her with a knife. He reminds her not to tell her mother because it could endanger both of them. Hearing this, Aran breaks down in tears, scared and helpless. Later, Kang Jia returns home feeling defeated, but suddenly hears something from around the corner. It's Aran, bloody and in shock. Kang Jia rushes to her side, holding her as she starts to lose consciousness and mumbles, Mom, before passing out. Kang Jia, haunted by the warnings about retaliation and repercussions, receives a text from Yi Kyung asking why Aran isn't in class, and she hurries to the academy. Noah tries to stop her, but Kang Jia leaves when she hears Yi Kyung's name mentioned down the hall. In an attempt to protect the girl, Noah lies and says it's not Yi Kyung, but then the girl is forcibly taken away by someone. Seeing this, Kang Jia chases after the kidnappers, but loses them in a crowd of students outside. In the chaos, a mysterious voice warns her to stay out of the situation, implying that she may lose her daughter if she continues to interfere. Back at home, Kang Jia contemplates the warnings and realizes that the system won't help her. She then goes into Aran's room that night and finds her daughter hiding under her desk, mumbling for her to save her. Kang Jia tends to Aran's injuries and then heads to a nightclub, ready for a confrontation. The nightclub is filled with middle-aged gangsters, rowdy and rough. A bouncer tries to stop Kang Jia, but a fight breaks out nearby. To everyone's surprise, Kang Jia easily takes on a group of gangsters, single-handedly defeating all the men who come at her. Kang Jia also delivers a message to one of the gangsters, asking him to inform their boss about her arrival. Surprisingly, the boss turns out to be her old high school buddy, Han Gangju. Following this, Kang Jia goes to meet the boss at her place, and here we learn that our mother was quite rebellious in her school days. When Gangju sees Kang Jia at her place, she is surprised as well as excited. We are then shown that during high school, Kang Jia couldn't stand injustice and often took matters into her own hands. For instance, she once broke windows to protest against a bad teacher and is no stranger to taking action. Back in the present, Kang Jia explains to Gang Ju that they need to investigate bullying at a school and bring the culprits to justice. She also mentions her futile attempts to seek help from authorities. Initially hesitant, Gang Ju changes her mind when she hears Kang Jia is doing this for her own daughter. They decide to go undercover at her daughter's high school to uncover the truth behind the bullying. Kang Jia emphasizes that going undercover as a student, collecting evidence, and taking legal action against the bullies is the only way to solve the problem. Later that night, Ah Ran is still shaken by the threat from Bok Dong, who held a knife to her throat. Kang Jia enters her room and tries to comfort her daughter, reassuring her that everything will be okay. Meanwhile, Yi Kyung receives a threat to keep quiet and transfer to another school. She requests the gangster to leave her friend out of this all, but he does not listen and suggests she just do as he mentioned. In the next scene, the judge Kang Jia sought help from leaves her a voicemail advising against solving problems through force. Kang Jia listens to the judge's voicemail and then deletes it, showing her determination to pursue her own path. On the other hand, as Aran's homeroom teacher can recognize Kang Jia if she joins the high school as a student, Gong Ju captures him and torments him to resign from his position. The principal of the school gets angry at the sudden resignation and is compelled to hire Noah as the new homeroom teacher. 
Afterward, Ah Ran, in distress, cuts her own hair unevenly, shocking Kang Jia, her husband and mother-in-law. Later, we see that Ah Ran is admitted to a mental ward in the hospital for observation, which deeply saddens Kang Jia. At this moment, the doctors suggest the latter let her daughter stay at the hospital for some days, hinting that staying away from family and friends might help her recover soon. The scene then shifts to Kang Jia and Gong Ju visiting a beauty shop to change the former's appearance as a high school student. Kang Jia's curly hair is straightened and Gong Ju decides to pose as her mother. At home, Kang Jia explains to her husband and mother-in-law that she'll be working longer hours with Ah Ran in the hospital. Later, she reads her daughter's journal, which has many pages torn out. Here, she discovers that Ah Ran's frustration about her is because of Kang Jia not officially acknowledging her and instead publicly claiming that Ah Ran is the daughter of her deceased sister. Kang Jia is hurt but understands her daughter's pain and defends her choices as a way to protect her. The scene then shifts to Chairman Park, who violently assaults his assistant, A Yun, expressing his hatred for women. Right then, his son, Hong Sang Tae, comes home, realizes what's happening, and starts a motorcycle to drown out the sounds of the beating. It's evident that Sang Tae has a troubled family life. The next day, Noah heads to the school, and so does Kang Jia. At school, surprisingly, the two end up in the same homeroom. Jung Wu introduces them to the students, and Kang Jia is assigned her daughter's empty desk. Yi Kyung protests that the seat belongs to her friend, but the vice principal ignores her. Following this, as Kang Jia sits at her daughter's desk, she's horrified to see hateful graffiti on it. The bully girls start taunting her, with the meanest one, Jung Hee, making fun of her name. Kang Jia then confronts her and asks if she wrote those horrible things. At this moment, Jung Hee coldly claims that she's just joking and apologizes for making fun of her. Kang Jia then instructs the mean girl to lock the door. Meanwhile, Noah takes a look at Kang Jia's student file and remembers the rainy night incident involving Soju. He then returns to the classroom and realizes that the door is locked. To his shock, Noah peeks in to see Kang Jia ready to punish three girls with a broomstick. However, just as she's about to hit Jung Hee, Bok Dong, the one who threatened her daughter, intervenes and asks her to stop. He even mentions that he can kill her and suggests she stay away. Enraged, Kang Jia grabs him by his neck, and when she's about to hit him, Noah arrives there, grabbing her wrist. Sometime later, after getting information about the fight from one of the students, Jung Wu arrives at the classroom and stops the fight right when Kang Jia punches Bok Dong. Jung Wu is shocked by Kang Jia's use of a stick on her fellow students over a messy desk. In response, Kang Jia argues with the teacher, questioning if violence in school is acceptable as long as it's not visible. After leaving Jung Wu's office, Kang Jia has a conversation with Jung Hee. Here, when Kang Jia inquires about the head of the bullies, Jung Hee reveals that Bok Dong is a school leader, but Hong Song Tae has the most power and status because he is the son of the school's president. She also mentions that Song Tae used to have feelings for Ah Ran, and her support for Yi Kyung led to the bullying against her. After a conversation with Gang Ju, the vice principal suggests leniency for Kang Jia, since it's her first day at the school. Jung Wu accuses the vice principal of covering for her and questions why he allowed her to transfer when the school doesn't accept transfer students. Noah claims that it's his fault, but Jung Wu reminds him he's only been on the job for three hours. In the following scene, Noah pleads with Jung Wu to show leniency to Kang Jia, but the latter refuses, emphasizing that violence cannot be ignored and the school must protect its students. Unbeknownst to them, Kang Jia overhears their conversation and is impressed by Jung Wu's principles. On the way home, Kang Jia tries to approach Bok Dong, but Noah stops her and takes her to a bakery. Here, Noah questions why Kang Jia resorted to violence on her first day at school. In response, Kang Jia refuses to explain and straightforwardly states that Noah is weak and cannot protect her. She believes she's alone and must defend herself, sometimes through fighting. On the bus ride home, she reflects on Noah's weakness, Jung Wu's integrity, and Bok Dong's low character. Later at night, Jung Wu visits the director of education, surprisingly addressing him as father. 
He seeks support again, recalling a bitter memory of a cash payoff when his mother died. Sadly, the director refuses to help, and Jung Woo returns, not before stating that he will make the former apologize to him. While Kang Jia is traveling in the bus, someone can be seen observing her closely. Kang Jia also realizes that she's being followed, and approaches the person, only to find out that she is Yi Kyung, who pleads with her to tell her about Ah Ran. Without revealing her relationship with Ah Ran, Kang Jia brings Yi Kyung to see her daughter at the hospital. Seeing Ah Ran unresponsive, Yi Kyung promises to reveal the secret and protect her, but the former warns her not to speak, fearing for their safety. Later, when Yi Kyung leaves Ah Ran's room, Kang Jia demands answers about the one who bullied Ah Ran, but she claims to know nothing. Frustrated, Kang Jia vows to find the culprits and bring them to justice. She instructs Yi Kyung to keep the condition of Ah Ran a secret and promises that she will protect her. In the next scene, Dong Chil, a gangster for whom Bok Dong works, instructs the young boy to fetch more alcohol. While Bok Dong is away, he stares at a picture of himself and another boy, and we sense the unhappiness in his life. In a flashback, Dong Chil recalls the time when he learned that Kang Jia is involved with his brother. He does not like their relationship, and even urges Gong Ju to warn her friend to back off. Later, he finds Kang Jia alone and holds her at knife point. But unfortunately, his brother intervenes, leading to a violent struggle that results in his brother's death. Back to the present, while reviewing Kang Jia's file, two teachers mention that Zhang Wu has been promoted to the senior position, indicating the power shift in the school. Following this, when Zhang Wu is planning to expel Kang Jia, Sang Tae intervenes and compels him to make a one-time exception for Kang Jia much to Noah's relief. During recess, Kang Jia follows Bok Dong into the men's bathroom, startling him. Unfortunately, when she begins interrogating Bok Dong about Ah Ran, Noah intervenes and prevents her from hitting the former, which frustrates Kang Jia. In the next scene, A Yan arrives at the school and meets with Jung Wu in a secret room behind bookshelves. Unbeknownst to them, Yi Kyung is also there, and she secretly observes them. Sometime later, Yi Kyung confronts Jung Woo as he leaves the secret room, insinuating that she knows about his involvement in the attack on Ah Ran. She warns him that she can become his Achilles heel if he doesn't stop. After this, we learn that Jung Woo was in a relationship with Yi Kyung in the past, and recalls a time when she overheard him talking about becoming his father's Achilles heel. He then regrets teaching her too much. Without wasting any time, Jung Woo then meets with Dong Chil and orders him to take care of the matter regarding the girl, Yi Kyung. In response, Dong Chil promises to work on it both inside and outside of school. Next, Bok Dong receives a call from Dong Chil and goes to meet him at a club. Kang Jia also follows him, despite Yi Kyung's pleas not to get involved with Bok Dong. She arrives at the club and ditches her schoolgirl disguise. Coincidentally, Noah and his teacher friend end up at the same club. Although the former is reluctant to enter, his teacher friend drags him in. Afterward, Kang Jia notices Bok Dong talking to Dong Chil, where the gangster asks the young guy to murder someone and assures to take care of him. Dong Chil also reveals that murder only carries a two-year penalty because he's a juvenile, which is disturbing. Right then, Kang Jia recognizes Dong Chil and gets a flashback to the courtroom where she was convicted and the judge sentenced her to two years in prison. During that time, Dong Chil went berserk in the courtroom, attempting to strangle her for causing his brother's death. The episode ends with Dong Chil turning towards the door and spotting Kang Jia, leaving her stunned like a deer in headlights. <laughs>